what happens if you Google Michael Jackson? You will get dozens of pages about Michael Jackson. These pages will all talk about the pop star. It's very likely that you won't be surprised. You will find that uh, very normal because it's likely that that's what you were expecting. But if you think about it, you might be surprised. Why? Because there are thousands of Jacksons in the world. And maybe there are actually hundreds of Michael Jacksons with web pages. The taxi driver, the architect, the engineer. Why don't we ever get any of these? Why do we get the pop star Michael Jackson? And as I pointed out, we won't be surprised because this is very likely what we want. The reason is that Google has a way of scoring the pages such that those that are considered important are returned first. And the success of Google is an algorithm that is called PageRank that measures this importance. Rank is for ranking and page for both the pages on the web as well as the name of one of the founders of the company, Larry Page. So I'm going to explain intuitively how Google ranks pages and how this algorithm performs. In order to understand the page rank algorithm, it's important to recall that the web is a set of pages and these pages have links or paths that connect them. So when PageRank decides which page is considered the most important, it exploits these paths between them. Today, we estimate that there are about 10 to the 12 pages indexed on the web. So indexed means we considered the important keywords in these pages and we classified them according to those indexes. A typical index is Michael Jackson. So one day we may reach the famous Google math number. So how does PageRank exploit these paths? I will explain that in four steps. The first thing to understand when we try to compute the page rank of a page P is the following. We sum all the link of all the paths from pages to the page P. So if a page here P has one link, then the first step in our reasoning says that the page rank of P will be 1. If there are two links towards this page, this will be 2, and so forth. Intuitively, the idea is the following. If somebody ends up in a given page here, then the existence of this path means that this user is likely to walk towards the page P. So we think of it as a random walk, and these paths model somehow the fact that a user will has some probability of ending up in the page P. This is the first step. The second step in this reasoning is the following. Assume somebody's a random walker is here. If there is a single path from this page to this page, then this page is likely more likely to be reached than if there is another link from this page to this page. So the number of outgoing links from a page just decreases if this number is high, the probability of ending up in page P. So the second step in the reasoning is that we need to divide this number here by the number of outgoing links from the page PI that points to page P. Now, an important factor, and this is the third step on our reasoning, is the following. A page P is more likely to be reached if there is a path to this page from a page that is already that already has a big page rank itself which means that there is a high probability of reaching this page. And this is captured in this equation, but by the recursive function that says that the score or the page rank of a page P is the sum of the page ranks of the page PI have a path to page P divided by the outgo outgoing links from PI. So this is the third step, but there is still one missing point. So the last step in this reasoning consists in accounting for the fact that this random walker, he walker here could not only go to this page P or this page P prime, but could also be teleported or fly to another page Q. And this is captured by what we call sometimes a damping factor. And the actual formula to compute the page rank of a page P, accounting for the ability of a random walker to go somewhere else, is actually the following. And D is typically considered to be 0 0.85, which actually says that after every six pages that we reach through paths, we may go to another page chosen at random. This number N denotes the total number of uh, considered 
pages. And the nice thing about this formula is that if we sum all the scores, we will end up with one, which actually means that the scores represent a probability distribution. So I'm going to illustrate here how we uh, compute these uh, scores or these page ranks on a simple, simple example. Consider a very simple case of two pages A and B pointing to the other one. Computing their page rank consists in solving the following equation. Page rank of A equals 1 minus D. Remember that D was 0 0.85, so which 1.15 over the total number of pages considered plus D, which is 0 0.25 times the page rank of B divided by 1, the total number of outgoing links from B. Same thing for page rank of B, exactly the same. So if we solve this uh, system of equations, we end up with a PR of A, which is 0 0.5, and a PR of B, which is 0 0.5. They all have the same score, or they all have the same importance, so page rank will return both of them if they have the same index and this index correspond to the query. It's important to see here that no matter how we start from the page rank of A and the page rank of B, as long as their sum equals 1, we will end up with 0 0.5 in both cases. This is because we apply the fixed point theorem, which ensures that no no matter where we start, we will end up with a single solution to the problem. So for instance, if we start from PR of A equals 0 and PR R of B equals 1, then after a first iteration, we will compute, for instance, that PR of B equals 0 0.15 over 2, which is 0 0.075, and PR of A will be 0 0.075 plus 0 0.85 which is 0, 0.925, or if we want, 1 minus 0, 0, 0.075. Second iteration, and I will go quickly here, will yield PR of A equals 0, 0.87, and PR of B roughly 0, 0.13. After a few iterations, we will end up with 0, 0.5 for A and 0, 0.5 for B. So now assume a slightly more sophisticated scenario where we add another page C and assume, for instance, that C has a path to A. In this case, PR of A will be 0 0.15 over 3, because we consider 3 pages, plus 0 0.85 times the number of pages that point A, which is PR of B over the number of outgoing links from B, which is 1, plus PR of C, which is the number of outgoing links from C, which is 1. Same thing of PR of B, 0 0.15 over 3, 0 0.85 times the number of pages that points to B, which is PR of A times the outgoing links from A, and finally PR of C will be 0 0.15 over 3. No page has a path to C. So here, the way we could solve this problem is starting from page rank of A equals 0 0.5, page rank of B equals 0 0.5, and page rank of C equals 0, the sum equals 1. After a few iterations, we will end up with PR of A, which is 0 0.486, PR of B equals 0 0.43, and PR of C, 0 0.05. The sum again equals 1, and what's not surprising is that PR of C is pretty small. PR of B and PR of A are roughly the same, with a slight advantage to PR of A, because there is uh, an outgoing link to A, but the outgoing link comes from a page with a very small page rank, so the difference between A and B is still roughly the same. We can, of course, consider a slightly more complicated scenario. For instance, if after some point B points to C, so there is a path from B to C, and A also points to C. In this new scenario, the page rank of A, of course, changes because here the number of outgoing links from B becomes 2. The page rank of B also changes because the number of outgoing links from A is now 2. And the page rank of C also changes because now C has two links pointing to it, so we need to account for the page rank of A over 2 plus the page rank of B over 2. So the new scores we end up with are the page rank of A, and you can check this after a few iterations, the page rank of A of 0 
432, page rank of B 0 0.233 and the page rank of C 0 0.3. It might be obvious to see why the page rank of C is significantly higher than that of B. This is B because B has one link pointing to it and C has two. But one, one may wonder why the page rank of C is lower than that of A. And this is because of this link. This link is much more important than the link from A to C because A has two links, two outgoing links, one from B, one towards B, and one towards C. And these, the existence of two links dilute a little bit the power of this one, whereas C has only one link towards A and that's why A ends up with the highest score. So if Google has to choose, it will choose this A to return to uh, the Googler. So for instance, if this is Michael Jackson, and this is Michael Jackson, and this is Michael Jackson, so Google will interpret this as the most important link, the most important page, and it's very likely that this will be the pop star.